Hello everyone and welcome to Vorkmanser's vlog for the Warmer for the Fast and Gaming System created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to the 2023 rewind of this channel. Uh, in this video I'm gonna look back on the year that has been and talk a little bit about the things that I managed to achieve and do during this year. And it's been a lot actually. Uh, because a couple of years ago, I, did, I decided that I was going to stop with the New Year's resolutions and start with the New Year's uh, flashbacks or re reviews and watch. Instead of looking at uh, feeling ashamed of the things I didn't achieve, I would celebrate the things I did achieve. But before I go into that, I would have to say that 2023 has been a tough year for me. It's been a very bad year. Um, while the first months they were kind of they were there they 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 just flow they flow on, but uh, in May I had my first major setback and that's when my computer crashed and I had so many files that I had forgotten to uh, put over on a secondary hard drive to keep them safe, and it just broke me. I was like, all right, would I would I even want to continue with this? Is this something I want to do? Uh, it's like. It really broke my uh, sense of doing this type of hobby that I've been doing for over uh, 10 years now. And then came the second thing is, th is that I think I had a uh, depression for the past three years, which started during the beginning of the pandemic, where I, I had isolated myself both because I had to, it was past part of the requirements in, in order to get through this pandemic but it also became like uh, something I made on my own self and I started eat. yeah it, it just became a sh shit show and I had to reboot myself during the summer and I don't know how I'm feeling right now that that's the thing I, I was talking with a psychiat uh, psychiatrist uh, I, I think that's the proper uh, job title for her uh, and, and I said that um, I don't know if I'm feeling good. I don't f feel bad, but I am back in the similar type of routines that I was doing before I realized I had um, a depression or what I think is a depression. And she said, well, as long as you don't feel bad, should you overthink it too much? And I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. Because if I don't feel bad, should I go and worry about it? Uh, so that's the thing. I, I I try to change my habits. I try to do do less of the bad things and do more of the good things. Uh, and I think I'm feeling a little bit better mentally because of it. But yeah, so, so the summer started out really wild. I was all over the place mentally. I couldn't focus. I couldn't sit down. I just had to be out and be active. And then I went on the, the vacation to Gotland where everything it was like you pulled the, the brakes and I'm like everything stopped and I'm like what's going on and and that's I think when I started to settle down and uh, uh, started uh, yeah I'm, I'm feeling good now but then came the fall where I was kind of stressed out at first at, jo at my job and then I got sick and I I'm not sure because I didn't test myself but I'm pretty sure that I got uh, the C word the Nurgle's Plague, the Nurgle's Plague. And uh, I got fever for a week. And then I think I went back to work too early because then it just kept on piling on. It never got away. And I think I've been sick for almost 15 weeks now with only one day's uh, break from it. And the reason why, um, and outside of being having the, the fallout from my fever the week, I also got an, a cold or a twice a, a, a virus infection on my throat and it's like my vocal cords they have been so ruined during this past time as like <laughs> that it's been so stressed out it was really bad uh, and I was stressed out because I had a lot of videos I wanted to make and upload here on the channel and it affected a couple of my reviews that I did during October where you can hear my my voice is not okay. So 2023 has been a shit show of a year. But yeah, so that's that's just the overall thinking of it all. Now we're gonna go into the progress. What have I actually managed to do? And I think we can start with the smaller things, which is gonna be the best short stories that I've read during this year. 
So I read this, the several short stories in a Space Wolf series. I don't. I think it's. I think it's just uh, collected into a novel format that is called Space Wolves, uh, and it's available in a, another um, anthology called the Sagas of the Space Wolves or something like that. And I, I read all of them. I think they were good, but it's like they started with one thing and then they, it took such a long time. So I almost, you almost forget about what the hell are you even doing in this uh, this um, series. Then I read a lot of the short stories re- relating to that of uh, Sanctus Reach, like the Fall of Hive Jensen. I read uh, a couple of the um, Grey Knight stories that's going to be coming out in, in next year at um, in January. I also uh, finished reading Uprising, which is an anthology of Necromunda stories. I, I le- read the Chaos Space Marine stories, The Small Cog, It Bleeds, Sacred Hate, The Brightest and the Best, A More Perfect Union. But I would say my favorite short stories of this year is the anthology of No Good Men, which is the second book you, would, you could call in the Warhammer Crime etiquette I haven't read all of the short stories in that anthology. I have one left, and that's because I haven't read the first novel, which technically is a prequel, or the short story is a sequel to that, so I didn't want to read it ahead of time. But I wanted to include it here on this list, because should I save it just for the next year? And I don't even know if I'm going to be finishing it by then, so I was like, no, I'm going to keep it on this year's um, inclusion. And I think it's a really good anthology, so I highly recommend that you read it. I also read Shane's and the Slate Run, which is also uh, Shane uh, Warhammer Crime related short stories, and Clara's Glass and Once a Killer, both part one and two. So all my favorite short stories this year has been Warhammer Crime related, and, and I think I, I should actually start um, picking up those reviews. I'm thinking about doing something called Noir Vember, where I review all the Warhammer Crime series uh, books and stories and such. But yeah, so those are my favorite short stories. Then we can go over to the best novellas that I read this year. I haven't read that many novellas this year. I read The Knights of the Imperium, which is, as it said, uh, about Imperial Knights. I read Love Lives, which is a um, Necromunda novella. And it's also the last novella that's out currently in the, um, what do you call it, su- supplement or uh, available availability. There might be some old ne- uh, novellas that I haven't read, but it is in my pile. But I think it's the last one that, uh, at the moment. I will have to check that out. Then I read an Iron Hands uh, novella called Medusa and Wings, Wings, which was really good. It more or less just uh, give you a good portrayal of the Iron Hands, which I think has been very overlooked in, in the fiction. They are very one note side noted, but I think they were really good and well written in this uh, novella, so that's why it's one of my favorites. And then I also included Maledictus, which is very fascinating because it's the turning point for me, because I haven't been a huge fan of the Grey Knights in the past. I, I even uh, downgraded a novel by Aaron Densky Bowden, one of my favorite authors, because he wrote about the, the Grey Knights and I was like, yeah, that's not for me. I'm currently rereading it for the first time in 10 years, and my perspective on the whole thing has definitely changed. So there's going to be a review uh, changed up for that in next year as well. But uh, since that was so re- revolutionary in that it made me like The Grey Knights, it also got me into... Uh, uh, and I think the reason was uh, because I started playing Chaos... Um, what do you call it? Chaos uh, Gate Demon Hunters... And then I started reading these stories afterwards. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm hooked. I, I still don't like how they look, uh, but I like the idea of the Grey Knights, if you get my, my thing. Well, I don't like that they are so clean, but I like some idea of them. But anyway, so that's my favorite two novellas I read this year. And then I read, uh, listened to several audio dramas. First of all, we have Sanctus Reach, uh, Claw of Morg, Sanctus Reach, Ice Claw. Then we have the Grey Knight stories, True Name and Incorruptible. Two of those I've already up on my channel and they were affected by my voice there in October. So I may be careful, more careful this year and trying to get out my reviews much earlier instead of uh, pushing it on a little bit. 
Uh, and then I also read uh, the, for, uh, for the first time, listened to some Horace Harris stories in a while. Conrad Curse, A Lesson in Darkness, and Malkador, The First Lord of the Imperium. And uh, I don't think I talked about this, but in tw- 2019, I think it was 2019, I had my last couple of reviews of uh, Horace Harris related stories. I haven't re- uh, re- reviewed anything in the past four years. And uh, I. I think I reached a point where I had a little bit of burnout when it comes to the Horus Heresy because I was reading all the stories, I was doing all the models, and I was like, there's there's too much of it in, at the same time, and I had a burnout. So that's when I started uh, going back to 40k stories, which I had uh, pushed to the side. It was like, I, I don't like these as good as the Horus Heresy stories, but it was a switch around there. And it's been very fun to rediscover 40k and reading these stories, but I've also felt the same here rediscovering 30k and Horus Heresy. Uh, but I have made a promise to myself that I will acquire all the stories, all the books, before I start reading them, and then I'm gonna read them in chronological order f- of the stories that I have left. Because I, of course, I have already done a, several several reviews already. And they are out of order. But the stories that I have left, I'm going to try and do in some kind of either chronological or type of systematic order. But I'm still waiting for the last two, the last two uh, Horus uh, Siege of Terror books, which is uh, End and Death Part 2 and 3. So I still have, oh, still have those left. But then they're still keeping pumping out short stories from left to right. I'm like... God, you're supposed to end this series. Stop making stories. And I, I started to think, like, will I actually want to read these short stories? Because just yesterday, uh, when I'm recording this, I, I saw that they have uh, put out a Horace Heresy story that sets on Istvan Free. And we're like, it was 10 years ago that when Istvan Free was still re- relevant. Move on. End this series. Like, you can't. You can't milk the Horus Heresy too much. That's uh, that's we already have almost seventy books and anthologies. You can't keep on pu- pumping in out. And if you're gonna pump out short stories, do them in anthologies. I don't want to buy them separately. It's such expensive stories. Sorry, mini rant here. Anyways, uh, so my favorite audio dramas for the year: Conan Curse and Malkador. And then we can go over to best movies. I haven't watched that many movies uh, this year, but I have watched Indian News and The Dial of Destiny. I think, oh, this is a tough one because it's better in many regards than uh, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but Kingdom of the Crystal Skull still felt like an adventure movie, which I don't think Dial of Destiny felt like. Do Do you get my feeling that... Uh, you can still feel the connection between the fourth and the original trilogy, even though it's ruined by CGI and the written story. But then I also uh, looked. Uh, I started to re um, get back on Marvel because I haven't uh, kept kept up with Marvel in, uh, movies in the like, last year. So I watched Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, and considering that the main characters actor died in between uh, these movies i think they did the best they could with the source material and i think it was an actual heartfelt story it was a lot of uh, grievance in it Uh, so i think it was really good and then i watched the guardians of the galaxy holiday special which i think was a fun kind of okay middle chapter showing you where everyone was at the time Uh, but my favorite movies that i saw this year is barbie uh, but at the, at the time when I added this on this list as my favorite, uh, I would say it's, it's a really funny movie and it has some sort of a deeper message. But I've also seen several reviews that criticizing that it's very, very surface level feminism. Uh, and I can agree to a certain part that they should have dived even deeper, but it still resonated well with me. So it's still my favorite. And then we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Which also is a good, uh, really good movie. I would say though that uh, th- the problem with Guardians of the Galaxy Three is that it ends like it's uh, setting up that it should be at least one more movie. It feels like a middle chapter, like uh, 
Star Lord and uh, the girl that he was in love with in the first two movies, they don't end up with each other in this movie. And it feels like, all right, we have set up that they don't hate each other now. Now you're going to get together in the next movie. And it feels like it feels uh, like several threads are uh, left open there. So it should, uh, yeah, it, it, that, that's my only complaint about the movie. Everything else I really enjoyed about it. Now we're going to talk about the best TV series. Uh, of the TV series that I've seen this year is Secret Invasion, which is a terrible Marvel movie. And then The Sex Lies of College Girls, which is uh, less raunchy than the title suggests. I think it was a really funny comedy. It also dwelled into some really uh, harder themes about uh, the experience of going to college as a girl and the challenges that you can come, a uh, come up against with. It was really good. I was really well written. Uh, I would see, only seen season one so far, but it's really good. Uh, and then I also watch. I've I haven't seen the whole first season, but The Last of Us I've seen, and the, the thing I've seen so far is really good. It's a really good adaptation of the game, even though I I think it's really sad that they didn't get um, the the Scottish guy from Three Hundred to play Joe because he looks identically to him. But it also the, but the problem is that he is 15 years old too old to play Joe even by now standards. So I think uh, Pedro Pascal is doing a good job as uh, of um, mantling that role. But uh, I haven't finished the, the whole first season. But I I'm I'm adding it as one of the best seasons I've seen this this series uh, this year. Uh, then we have Ashoka uh, or Ashoka. Uh, I never remember how to pronounce her name. Uh, and that's a very strange amalgamation, amal amalgamation of uh, different things because it's a continuation of the show Rebels, which had its ups and downs, but overall it's a very enjoyable series for me. Uh, and it, they do to try to go go the deeper route with many things, go into the stranger things of uh, of um, Star Wars, but at the same time they they fumble. On the finishing line, you could say. It also ends on a cliffhanger and it's uncertain if there's going to be a season two. It's all up in the airs after the strike. So it's uh, we'll see how it goes with that. But then I watched two uh, um, Warhammer Plus shows that I'm actually going to put as my favorite. And that's going to be Black Talon, which is an Age of Sigmar show. Even though I'm not that invested in Age of Sigmar, I really like that show. It has a lot of depth, depth to it. The same thing is with Interrogator, which is a 40k show. Two really good shows that I highly recommend that you watch. Interrogator also comes out as a feature-length film format now that you can see watch in all one go, which I also recommend that you try and do. Uh, moving on to the next is the best games that I played this year. Uh, we have two games that is very low on my list. Uh, it's only because they're new that I mentioned them, but it's Chronology and Story of My Uncle. The first one actually has a really cool mechanic of time travel where you see a world before and after a disaster and you can travel between them when you try to do puzzles and it's, it's really fun. But it's, uh, it's, a, it's a game that you can finish in uh, one evening uh, unless if you get stuck on several of the puzzles. A story of my uncle is this is um, uh, is um, an, an what do you call it puzzle game uh, or a platformer where you try to travel through different parts of a uh, of a world with a super suit. Uh, it's just uh, um, platforming, uh, and then we have Sanctus Reach, which is a game that when you're playing actual missions, it's quite fun. But when you're just playing in skirmish mode, which is uh, like seventy percent of the time. It's not equally as uh, uh, fun to do, but uh, I also try uh, try um, tried out the alpha and beta versions of Rogue Trader, which I found very good. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how the full games uh, develop now that I've it's been fully released. I haven't tried it yet, but it's uh, on my to do list. I will add it on this uh, next year's uh, list because I've only tried the alpha and beta, and I don't think they are. Uh, justifiable, if you call it. I, th I think you need to play the full game to fully understand. So uh, technically, I'm, I'm going to call it just the beta or alpha versions on the best game here. But it, uh, the full game is going to be a separate ent entity. 
But my favorite game of the year, even though it's not the best of the series, is Hitman 3. It's, uh, I have so many hours put into that and I still have many hours more to put into it further. So it's my favorite game of the year. Then we can go into my best novels. First of all, I have a couple of Swedish novels that I read and I'm going to translate them. And the first one is F as the Worst, which is about a girl that fails everything at school. It's really good. It's about uh, feeling the, the tightness and the hardship of uh, starting a school uh, in a Swedish uh, school in uh, the, uh, what is it, sixth grade, I think, when you're 12 years old. Then you have two erotic novels, Hold Him Tight and Un The Unwilling Cooperation. It's, they are actually written by a friend of mine. Uh, I will not do a review of them uh, as um, they have raunchy, uh, what do you call it, raunchy content in them. And I don't really want to explore too much of that on my channel. I want, I'm trying to keep it as a little bit PG at least. Uh, but then I read Lords of Mars and Gods of Mars, the last two books in a trilogy of uh, the Fortress of Mars series. Then I finished uh, Path of the Renegade and Path of the Incubus this summer. I'm currently reading Path of the Archon, but it's so few pages left on it that I wanted to include it here as well together with the other two. And there will be reviews of that later on next year, so you have that to look forward to. Then I read the first Grey Knights book and its sequel, Dark Adeptus. I think, considering that they are roughly 20 years old, they hold up rather well, uh, considering everything. But my favorite book of this year is definitely Rise of Passage, which is a navigator book written by Mike Brooks. Uh, an author that I think just get better and better for each story that I read. Uh, so that's my favorite of this year. Uh, things that we're saying goodbye to this year is Silicon Valley, a show that I've actually finally finished watching all seasons of. And then we're also saying goodbye to the Arrowverse as a whole, because all of the, I think more or less all of the shows within the Arrowverse, with the exception perhaps of uh, Lewis, and, uh, Lewis and Superman, I think that's the only show that's still on. And maybe perhaps Stargirl, which is on this last season. But we're... It's, it's the end of an era because uh, just next year, no, we have passed the 10 year anniversary because that was in 2022, last year. Yeah, so it, it's been 10 years of superhero shows. Uh, unfortunately, they will not be favorably remembered for they were really fumbling here at the end. And what are the things that you are most proud of this year? Write in the comments down below if there is a good novel you've read, a good movie you've seen a game that you enjoyed playing, let me know down below. Thank you much for watching this and hopefully 2023 will, we, will be at least not as sucky as 2023 was. Thank you very much for watching this. See you around everybody. Bye bye.